All right, we've got two shows to talk about here and a lot to get into. We are four weeks away from uh, All In, and we don't have any matches yet. We're still waiting. Yeah, well, I do think we're setting up. I'm actually feeling some stuff, okay? I mean, it looks like Moxley and Orange Cassidy. That could be a TV match, but I think that that's, like, big enough. Probably MJF and Adam Cole. And maybe Omega and Ibushi against Jericho and Takeshita. I see these things being set up. And, um, and, and I mean, they're good, but it's like, I don't know, man. I would, for an 80,000 seat or 80,000 people, 90, you know, 85,000 seats, um, it's, it, I don't feel a dream match or anything like that. And um, I know Osprey tweeted, and I mean, you know, just basically talking about uh, doing the Copper Box show with Shingo Takagi the day before. So I think it's a real miss if he's not on the show. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see, you know, as far as as far as people going in, if they're going to, one of the things is if they're going to bring anyone from New Japan in um, and shoot an angle before they announce the match, they can't do that till August 16th because those guys are all, you know, in G1 um, until the 13th. So August 16th would be the earliest for any of the G1 guys, you know, um, to be announced for, for uh, or, or to do an angle, you know, whether that's Ishii, um, if they want to bring Ishii in. Um, and I think Ishii, I think Ishii is in, is he in for the Copper Box show? He might be. Um, Zach is in for the Copper Box show. I know that. Um and um, um, there's one of the uh, Kosei Fujita is as well, but I don't, I don't. I would not expect Kosei Fujita on um, on uh, the Wembley show at all. But uh, it's, yeah, I know. I mean, but there's at least something. I mean, you know, and, and you know, and and they may not have to break up MJF and Adam Cole to do the match because they pretty much said that uh, win, lose, or draw, um, I'm giving you a championship match. Which also could be in Chicago, but uh, so they're they're at least I'm at least seeing some directions built. Which last week there wasn't even that. Well, the show opened up with a Darby Allen video explaining why he owed everything to Ar Fox. He had left Seattle in 2017 to improve. Heard of this guy named Ar Fox in Atlanta. Lived in his car. Put over what a hard worker Fox was. One day he goes, "Where are you living?" And Darby said, "My car." Fox said, come, with, live, come live with me. He didn't charge him a thing. And he said, without AR Fox, there might not even be a Darby on. That's why he pushed for him to get the shot against Orange Cassidy. And uh, AR Fox Orange Cassidy was a great opener. I mean, everything we talked about with that Ishii match is all sorts of cross-up spots. One of those matches where if you don't, if you don't watch wrestling, you probably enjoyed this because of all the stuff they did. But if you do watch wrestling, you understood all the counters and everything, you probably loved it even more. And so finally Orange pins him with the mouse trap, and he shakes a hand afterwards. He puts his sunglasses on him, but then as he's celebrating, Fox crumbles up the sunglasses, and he KOs Orange Cassidy, and everyone's booing, and Darby runs down. He starts shoving AR Fox, saying, what are you doing? I, I put my name on you. You're embarrassing me. Chewed him out, told him to get his ass backstage, and as they're leaving, Moxley hits the ring, and he lays out Orange with a lariat. Kills him with the Death Rider and leaves through the crowd. I thought it was a great opening segment. Mm. I, I thought the match was pretty good. Um, you know, and they're obviously they're, they're, they went heel with AR Fox and they're doing something with him, you know, Mogul Enterprises. So it gets him, you know, um, gets him as the guy that they're, you know, not just, just a fill in guy, but someone with a, you know, with kind of a role. So. Um, he worked really hard, of course. He always does. And, yeah, I thought they had a pretty good match. Very good match. Jericho and Cal are doing a promo backstage, and Cal says, I got this idea. What about you and Takeshita forming a team together? Just give it a shot. Get those creative juices flowing. Jericho said, I'll give it a try. Don said, cool. Well, you'll love the opponents. It's Sammy and Daniel Garcia. And Jericho's caught off guard. Don says, listen, you told them they need to spread their wings and fly, so this is a great opportunity. You don't have to do it. Jericho says, I'll do it. And then Don says, I got one more thing to celebrate this. He has an oil painting of Don and Chris built like Greek gods 
with bad news smiling down from heaven. And from 1995, when Don still had a full head of hair. Died at this picture. And he said he had a special place to put it. Then we had Claudio and Wheeler doing promos, and Moxie showed up and just basically warned the babyface, stay in their lane, Pac's going to regret it. Jack Perry came out for a promo. They did a video package where Hook is sitting on the on a bench with the title, and then a train zooms by, and then there's no title, and then the train zooms by again and Hook is gone. So the story is that he's taking a train somewhere, and Jack Perry comes out with the title. And it was weird because he goes, you know, I said I was going to win a, a world title, but this is not what I was talking about. He starts bearing the FTW title. He says it was a belt created by a second-class company filled with scumbags, Title's never been recognized. But then he says, as soon as I put my hands on it, it became the real deal. So I don't know if he likes the belt or not. I couldn't get it clear after this promo. But he said he was the best wrestler to ever get within 100 feet of the belt. And then uh, Jerry Lynn ends up coming out because he's been burying ECW. And he says without ECW, there never would have been a Jungle Boy. Keep burning that mouth. How, 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 is, how is that possible? Well, you know, young young small guys. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, it's like, whatever. We got to I mean, tell it's, a story it's, it's, here. It's, it's a promo. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, I don't know what ECW has to do with Jungle Boy at all. Well, Jungle Boy is the FTW champion now, in fact. He yeah, couldn't, he couldn't be Boy. the FTW champion if there was no ECW. But he's not Jungle Boy anymore. Well, Jungle yeah, Boy. Yeah, but he's still Jungle Boy. Come on. Kidding me? No. He made he made a point that he's not Jungle Boy anymore. Well, I know, but he is. Like that's who he is. He is okay. still the same man that portrayed Jungle Boy, and okay, he would not be here if it were not for ECW. How is that possible? What does ECW have to do with him? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I was trying to. It's like it's like we paved the way, and it's like, I mean, there there were a million companies since then. I mean, you take it up with Jerry Lynn. I know. I just don't understand how ECW has anything to do with paving the way for Jungle Boy. But paved the way for Jungle Boy was his father, California independent scene. Um, what else? I mean, what did he, he didn't he didn't grow up to be as a hardcore wrestler. He, you know, grew up to be kind of a high flying guy. Um, you know, but I mean, it's like, I mean, ECW paved the way for certain guys without a doubt and was very influential promotion but i just don't know where jack perry fits into that in any way shape or form well he said if keep running your mouth get your ass kicked jungle boy says who's gonna kick my ass jerry dropped the mic and so uh next week it was weird when they advertised it later they just said it was gonna be a face-to-face but yeah. they pretty much plugged it like they're gonna have a match next week jerry said he could never do another match he said that many times. Well, they're going to have a fight or something. Well, they're going to do something, yeah. I mean, they're going to do an angle. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was something, you know. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again 
after a while.